What's up guys, Patrick's here. So I wanted to start walking through the multi-part studio section, starting with the first exercise, creating a master sketch. So we're gonna jump into these slides and start putting together a drawing. Slide one says, create a new document and make sure the workspace unit length is in millimeters. So we begin the new sketch on the front plane and then name the sketch master sketch. So we're gonna go through, create a document. I'm gonna entitle this master sketch. I'm going to title this first initial last name uh, exercise creating a master sketch. We're waiting for that to load. It should open up. And we are going to create a new sketch by selecting the front plane and renaming this sketch as it says in the instructions. Up at the top here, we can rename it. So if you look right up here, I'm going to click the pencil, and we're going to call this Master Sketch. Next slide. We're going to be constructing this figure here. So one thing that we can note about this figure is that it does not have to be perfect at the start. Even though it looks like you want to get something pretty exact, we're going to make all the adjustments utilizing constraints in order to make sure that everything fits into place appropriately. So from here, now that I'm, I'm going to enter the sketch, so we don't want to check this off just yet because that would imply that we're done with the sketch, but we're not quite there yet. So where I'm going to start with this is first my center line. So I'm going to make a line going all the way across. It does not actually matter what the length is because we're going to adjust that later. I'm also going to make my lines going... Ooh, I always make that mistake. So making sure when we're actually making our lines, I'm going to hit the L hotkey to start my lines again. I'm going to click on my line and then I just drag it up, make sure I'm holding. And then we're going to create a general shape to this figure. Keep going. Again, we do not care about the actual figure size itself because we will make the adjustments later as per the exercise. And then one final line going straight down. Again, make sure you're clicking and holding. It does make it easier to draw these lines. You can hit escape to get out of our line menu. Okay, very good. Oh, it's recording on this one. I see. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so we're going to look at construction lines by adjusting them. So we're going to right click on here. We are going to go to construction and this should change it over to a construction line type. So this makes it so they're not usable lines. These are lines that we actually just want to uh, manipulate as construction lines, and we're going to change all of them to reflect that for our master sketch. So yeah, we're not going to be creating anything out of these lines as of right now. We're just going to be using them for construction. So from here, what we're going to do is they pointed out in the actual drawing, these are the constraints that we're going to be using to make these all set up correctly before we actually add our sizes. I'm going to click off of these so they're not selected anymore and start working my way through these different objects. First thing I'm going to do is these three need to be equal. So looking at the top here, I'm going to make this full screen so we can see our different constraints. So at the top here, you have all the different constraints. What constraints are basically things that lock uh, the different shapes into each other in some kind of way. So for example, you can do things like set up parallel lines so the two lines will never cross at any point. So if I wanted to manipulate these two lines, I can make them parallel to each other and they would all just be completely across from each other and would not be intersecting in any way. Eventually these lines would intersect so they are currently not parallel. I can also set them to be equal to each other. So they'll select one of the lines and set them all equal to be the same line. So if I change one of these, they're all going to change because they're forced to be equal. So let's go back to our original setup. So I can start looking at what constraints are actually necessary. If you want to split the screen here, we do have the option to pull down this drop-down menu as well, but I just wanted to demonstrate all the different constraints that you can see. 
in this drop down menu, you can see that there are hotkeys as well that you can just press a key on your keyboard and it'll actually automatically start looking for these constraints. From here, I'm going to make a perpendicular one. These ones currently are perpendicular, but just for the sake of double checking, we are going to select both these lines and make sure there's a perpendicular constraint on them. This blue line as well is also going to be the midpoint between these two lines. So we're going to say this, we're going to mark off midpoint. And I'm going to escape that because I need to make this one perfectly straight line. So I'm going to continue the line right here, making sure that these are parallel to each other. Make this construction. And if you made them two separate lines, there's actually a command we can use to join these together. Let me just find it real quick. Alternatively, we can just retrace the line. So I'm going to go straight down just to make sure it's all one line. I'm going to delete the originals real quick just to clean it up a little bit. and make these construction. Okay, now we can easily set up our midpoint to be this guy. Clicking midpoint, and then see we adjusted the line there. So it did actually lengthen it a little bit just to make sure that that dot was the midpoint. Two more things to check up on. One, selecting these points and making them symmetrical so for those of you that don't know what symmetrical means, it means that it's equal on each side of a mirror, for example. They basically mirror each other on each side. So if I was to make this symmetrical, for example, when I click this, it just made these two line up because they're the exact same distance from the line basically looking like a mirror. So if you imagine a mirror as a wall, when you're looking in the mirror and looking at your reflection, these are now reflections of each other. Then finally, I just want to make sure that this line is horizontal. Again, it looks horizontal to us, but just to make sure, we're going to lock it into the horizontal position. And nothing really changed because it already was horizontal, but we just wanted to double check and make sure. So with all these in place, now we have a very similar claw-like shape that you can see here. It's not perfect yet, but it's going to be pretty soon because all we're going to do is eventually make adjustments to it. Because again, once we dimension something, everything else will change accordingly. We're going to do the same thing for making circles. So you can see circle A here. If we I'm going to blow this up real quick so you can see. But on circle A, you can see that this is a much smaller circle. This is a larger circle. And then we have the massive circle that isn't going to be connected to any of the other options. So we're going to make the circle A. And then every other A, we're going to use the equal constraint to make them all equal to each other. So bringing that back, let's mark these off. So I'm going to make, I'm going to click on the top section here, make sure that I'm selecting center point circle. And then we're just going to make a circle. Again, the size doesn't matter until we're completely done, because once we make them equal to each other, they should all be the same. And then when we change one of them, we change all of them. So I'm going to make all the small circles first. And I'm going to apply an equal constraint right away, so that way I don't get confused on which circles are which. So we're going to exit the circle tool. I'm going to select the equal tool and then start picking circles to actually make equal to each other. So I'm going to use this top circle as our base circle, and then everything else we're going to make it equal to each other. So it'll make it equal to the first circle you decide to click. As you can see, the circles are completely changing in size, and they're all equal to each other because of that constraint. I'm going to do the same thing real quick with the other circles. So I'm going to make bigger ones. Remember, this one's the biggest one, so we're just going to make a massive one that eventually we're going to change the size up, but it is not going to be considered equal. So from here again, we're going to use the equal constraint. 
start adjusting the size. So everything else is getting its size adjusted, getting slightly larger, but they're all equal. And that's the important thing. From here, this is where we start manipulating the sizes. So we can go to our dimension tool that you guys have used before. Right next to the constraints is the dimension tool. Dimensioning is basically a constraint. If I, as soon as I dimension something, it forces it to never be able to change from that size. So as you can see here, we have this dimension. We have the full length from this dot all the way down to the other dot. We, and then we have the different circle sizes. Massive circle. Deselect the dimension tool. Massive circle. Smaller circles. You can see right here. And then finally, the medium size circle. So if you look at our original drawing over here for what they actually have, ours is significantly smaller. So that is a critical thing in this exercise. When we start to change these values, we don't want, we don't want to panic and make sure that we're doing everything with the correct size. So as long as we're doing that, we should be OK. I'm going to start with the biggest piece and change it to 175. You notice it instantly broke. That is because we tried to set lines to be equal to each other, and suddenly we wanted to increase the size by a lot. So this is going to throw some things off. But as you start to work your way through the dimensions, it will start to correct itself. So these circles are super tiny right now. So what we're going to do is make the adjustments to the circles that we need to. The smallest one being 10. And then finally, the medium sized ones. So the medium sized ones we have marked down here. Oh, these are actually the, yeah, these are the medium sized ones, but they're really small right now. And I just confused myself. So we're at 25 for these. And you notice that everything changes size accordingly. So we're gonna, I'm gonna take these and stretch these out just so you can see the different sizes more clearly than we could previously. So we have 10 on the inside here. I'm gonna move this out a little bit. And then finally 25. So this is our full size shape. One thing that I do wanna increase as well that is not in the instructions is the original line. Cause again, I made this super tiny. So we're going to increase this by quite a lot just so we can actually see the original line. So from here to here, I'm just going to bump the size quite a bit. So right now, instead of 10, what I'm going to do is 125. Yeah, 125 seems reasonable. And that extends it out a little bit further. We can even take it a step further than that, do 150, just so it sort of matches up a lot closer to the original drawing. Again, they did not do this in the instructions, but if we want to just make sure the size is increased, we're just going to keep that there. Okay, with the size change, I can delete the dimension or hide it if I want to. So I just deleted it. What we can also do is just get rid of the drawing. And we'll delete the sketch entity, that's fine. So we scrap that. We're in a good spot for this. So something to keep in mind there. Our work plane is super tiny right now, but that is A-OK -okay as well. Because we do still have our master sketch set up. So from here, we're going to start attaching these values. So we're going to use a different constraint known as tangent in order to make these happen. So the first thing we're going to do is make lines that connect them via the tangents, aka the points in which where the circles, they inter, the lines intersect with the circles, but they never go completely through it. They only intersect at one point. So for those of you that had geometry before, you're more comfortable with this terminology than people who haven't had geometry in the past. But that's what a tangent is, is a line that runs to connect to the circle, but doesn't go through the circle and only connects at a single point. So first I'm going to demo how to make these without using the constraint. And then I'm going to show you why the constraints make it easier. So we're going to connect to the edge of the circle. So what I'm going to do here is draw a line. Let me fix that line. We're going to draw a line going straight out. I'm going to make sure it's perpendicular, at least to, the, to this line a bit, and make sure it's intersected. This gives me an intersection point between these two. So I'm going to click right there, run it to the circle. I'm going to look for this little symbol down here. If you notice that little circle with the line through it, that means that if I launched it over here, it would be tangent to the circle that's across here. So it connected only one point from the angle that we're at. From here, I'm going to take this and stretch it back. Just looking for the point where this is tangent again. That's perpendicular. Okay, right 
definitely just saw it. As you can see, this method is not super good. You have to get really close to this one. I keep intersecting with the original line. There we go. So as you can see, it's not perfect. But it works. We're pretty close to the actual intersection point. Yeah, so here is the original. Here's the one that's tangent and perpendicular. Again, not perfect, but it works. It functions. So we have that connection here, but it's not completely closed. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that and show you the more proper method for us to actually connect this tangent that's a lot easier using constraints. So looking at the actual drawing now, what we're going to do is do the tangent connection method that I just mentioned. So I'm going to drag this down, just to creating a line that goes past both circles. From here, I can actually utilize this to create a tangent. So we're going to select the tangent tool, select the line, and then select the circle. By doing that, it actually snaps the line to the tangent. You do this twice, and the tangent's done without pretty much any work required. Second, we're going to go to trim just to get off the excess. So I'm going to hit M or select the scissors button up at the top. Once you see that's highlighted, you can just click on the line. And you can see it trims off the excess amount of line there and just creates the finishing line touch there. So if I want to do this real quick, what I like to do is do lines that I'm going to make tangents for each one. And we're just going to line them up and then let the tangent tool take care of all the actual work. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay. And here, and then finally here. Okay. So we have a bunch of lines now. Oh, I missed one. Let's do the one from here to here. Okay, fantastic. So what we're going to do is tangent tool again. Do, 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 do. Oh, rude. There we go. And we just dude our way through all of these. And look, it's just making all the adjustments we need for it, basically taking out all the work that we actually need to do for these. And you can see here, it's also closing out all of the drawings that we require when we're going to go make the shape. So as I keep duding my way through all of these. Ooh, this one wasn't long enough, so this is actually an issue. You see it tried to process it, but it didn't know what to do. So what we're going to do, we're going to backtrack, and we're going to actually make this line a lot bigger. So that should help us out quite a bit. So again, make sure you pass the circles. Don't make the mistake that I just did. Select tangent. And this is where I mentioned why we go past it in the first place. You can clearly see where we had some blunder there. Oh, I don't want to select that one. There we go. Okay. Now that's all it's left to do is click the scissors or hit M to start trimming. And we're just going to clean all these up. Oop, trim too much. M. Just keep trimming. So the trim tool, unlike it does an inventor, if you're familiar with our inventor tools, uh, we can actually trim anywhere, and it's a much smarter trimmer than something like that inventor gives you. Uh, inventor and CAD in particular give you some some pretty good trimming options, but they require you to identify certain aspects of the part, where this one just kind of makes assumptions. And they're pretty good assumptions overall. It also functions as a delete key, which is really nice too. Oop, that was the wrong one. We're going to go back on that. Again, we're going to hit M. 
Luckily, these all are treated as individual trims. So unlike something like Inventor, when you make a mistake like I've been doing just now, it's less of a problem. Okay, then we have that corner. We have this guy. And uh, that looks like almost everything. We're almost done here. Last one. And we have a nice clean drawing. So that's really good. Uh, the only issue that I see here is this guy. This looks a little bit questionable. Oh, I might have trimmed something I shouldn't have. Yeah, let's go back. Apologize, this is wasting your time. That's what we get for doing things in one take like this, but... Yep, there it is. So we didn't need that, because this intersection is actually necessary. So again, don't get too trim happy, because again, you'll be making mistakes like that. We're only human, so... Okay, so I'm going to get off this one and this one. So these ones are good, but we did want these connections to make sure they were maintained. Same with this intersection here. So we do want to get rid of this one, but we want to keep this one. Also seems I got rid of a connection that I shouldn't have over here as well. So we're going to have to go pretty far back. Okay. Again, be careful where you're trimming. I'm going to leave this unedited so you guys will pay attention to some of these mistakes as well. And to make it look like I'm not some kind of crazy god. I know what I am. So again, just be careful with where you're trimming and making sure that everything kind of fits in our final sketch. Again, nobody's perfect. That's why the undo button exists in the first place. But we just need to make sure that we get, we don't go too far before we actually move on and realize way too late that we made a mistake. So I'm gonna cut off these ones here, but you can see there's the intersections we were looking for, and they kind of they pretty much match up with our intersections down here. We want to get rid of these two. Double check our sketch. We do have an extra over here from when we rapidly spam the undo button, and this looks a lot better. So we have our intersections here and here, as well as over here. So it's looking like it's a lot cleaner. Okay, a lot better. So we have our drawings, we have all of our measurements laid out. We're just going to double check to make sure we have everything. 25 on the outside is good, 10 on the little circles, and then 50 for that massive circle in the middle. And it looks like it pretty much matches up. OK, a couple things now that we still have to do in this section for the master sketch. What we're going to do here is we're going to use the fillet tool, the fancy fillet tool, as I like to call it in class. But we're going to select this. So we're doing a sketch fillet. We're going to select both these lines. We're going to click, and then we're going to type in our value. So currently, what we're going to do, we do the constraints here. We're going to use a radius of 15, as it says in the drawing. So instead of 0.25, which is like non-existent for us, we're going to use a radius of 15. Yeah, pretty solid there. And solid here as well. So another thing you can do, of course, is to click uh, oh, we're going to do both vertices, so we're just going to set it up both. Okay, so we're going to set it up and click, and it does the same exact thing. They also want us to add additional circles, so we're going to add some additional outer circles. Looks like on these four sections. Okay. Very good. And we're going to use the equal constraint. So real quick, we're going to set it up to be equal. First, we're going to make sure that these curves are equal. They obviously are because we measure them to be the same. I guess it doesn't like us to do that, so we're not going to do that. We're just going to keep them both 15. Or delete this one and set it equal. This is just so I can change it back at any point later. And it looks like it's perfectly fine for us doing that. 
Okay, then the last one, we're going to set all these circles equal to each other. I'm going to do it based on the middle one. Okay, and these are locked into place. We're all good. All the sizes seem okay. And as soon as I go and dimension and change one of them, they will all change accordingly. So that's really nice. That's why we do something like that in the first place. So for these circles, what I'm going to do is click the dimension tool. And again, you can select any of them that you chose because they all should be equal to each other. Right now it's 16.7. I just want it to be a flat 15. And you notice that every circle changed in our drawing. So every circle that was tied to the original circle is changed. So they're all 15. And that allows us to complete our master sketch. So a master sketch in a nutshell will allow us to take this drawing and we can import it into a particular part, make changes and adjustments, but then if we want this baseline sketch to remain unchanged, we can keep it as such. And that's what the rest of this entire section is going to explore. When we're creating the multiple parts in the next part studio, it is going to be based on this actual part. So we're going to be utilizing this sketch in the future, but for right now, this is successful. So this constitutes the solution to the exercise. If you have this completed and everything is good to go, everything's squared away, we have everything dimensioned to prove that we have all the same, what you can do is, just like previously, we can use the snipping tool or screenshot tool, take a picture of our actual drawing, and then submit that to me as a completed assignment. So no official part documentation needs to be done. You just have to take this and submit it accordingly. Okay, so that's everything required for this tutorial. I hope you guys found this informative and useful. Uh, please let me know if there are any other questions. You can always reach out to me uh, if you have any concerns with this particular content or any other content. Thanks, and have a good day.